few minutes later and he's just somebody's drone. White became someone else, the dead man. Someone who didn't understand what had happened to him. White ran down the street, taken over, screaming. Screaming a name over and over. Otto, I'm Otto. Because that was the dead man's name. White thought he was Otto. Or most of them did. White, deep down, still knew who he was, and that was worse. Sometimes, out of a casual cruelty and kind of boredom, one of the other detectives, usually Blakely, would call White Otto until Finch made him stop. Well, they found him a day later, Alvin would say, once they figured out who the dead body was, carrying in a closet, saying Otto over and over again, in the dead man's apartment, a caution to us all. Then they would clean glasses and bottles, congratulating themselves on being alive. The truth was they told the story less to humiliate White than to keep reminding themselves not to take any chances. No dumb moves. White got Otto out of his head eventually, most of Otto, but not the fungus. That became worse. The gray cats couldn't or wouldn't help. Maybe they saw it as some kind of perverse improvement. No one had ever found out who lured White there or why. And Finch knew they never would. <coughs> and then there's just a quick break. Yeah. Back to the press. Through the doors of boats, through many doors, always with sudden water between them, gray and black, depending on the shifting clouds above, the distance wide enough to make them jump. Then narrow is a line of blue as the boat's rocks lashed together by ropes that groan. A marsh smell, a fish smell. In the spaces seeping water from old wounds, the texture of warped planks beneath their feet, weathered in a hundred ingenious ways. Across decks that announce them to the creek caused by their weight, wood singing a dull protest. Following the wide back of their silent guide, white the worse off for being taller, having to contort his twisted frame into whatever shape awaited him. The doors got smaller, then larger, then smaller again, oval, rectangular, square, inlaid with glass, gone, leaving only a gaping doorway and a couple rusted hinges. Bosom stopped suddenly then, turned back to look at them from just inside the doorway. Are we there already, White asked, peering over Finch's shoulder? You could feel his breath, hot and thick. Bosom smiled, a thin smile, nothing humorous about it. They stood precarious outside the doorway, on a tiny deck, backs to a cabin wall, a trough of water lapping between the boat, a heron croaking across the slate gray sky. Toss your guns, Bosom said. Why should we, White asked. No guns allowed with start. Too bad, White said. Bosom said, drop them in the water or I'll leave you here. Framed by the doorway, gray water shadows leaking all over him. Bosom didn't look human, didn't look real, seemed to be receding from them while all around the sounds of the spit became stronger, like a drumbeat that faded in one place, picked up with a different tempo in another. White said, again, why should we do that? Because, Finch said, we don't know where we are, and if he wanted to kill us, he thought, he'd have done it already. But his smile widened while White cursed, said, do you know who we work for? As if in a dream, White watched himself toss his gun into the water. It disappeared. <coughs> Sorry. It entered like a diver, head first. The water parted for it, disappeared without a splash. A kind of relief came over him, a kind of acceptance. The gun had been nothing but trouble. The gun had always caused problems. White gave Finch a look of betrayal, hesitated. Bosom receded further. White could shoot Bosom, then they'd be lost in hostile territory. Or White could miss, and Bosom would be gone anyway. Or White could get rid of his gun, and Bosom would leave them. But Finch didn't think that would happen. He tugged the gun from White's reluctant hand, threw it in the water as White muttered, Mistake, Finch. Mistake. Ah, shit. <laughs> it was gonna happen. Then Bosom was just a wide back again, a kind of door himself, leading them somewhere dangerous. Thank you. Now we can go back to our food drink.